Hi everyone. Well, this is take two, as they say. If you are one of my patrons and you have just watched my previous video, which shows how to detect a stress line in glass, then you will know what this one's all about. This is now the glass that I'm going to be using for my little doggy portrait. Uh, the customer did want a cocktail glass, but all the cocktail glasses that I have are very fine um, and as per my previous video the one that I was going to use had a massive stress line right in the middle which I detected with Polaroid film of course so I have asked them again and of course they were quite happy to go with the wine glass and I have this which is a very substantial heavy quite thick lovely crystal wine glass a far better ca canvas for my doggy portrait um, and this is their wee doggy I'll show you the slightly larger picture right there we go this is Trevor or was Trevor uh, a lovely lovely dog um, that belonged to friends of ours and uh, he was ever so sweet. As you can see, he's, I'm not really sure of, of the breed, but obviously something cr cross dashing because he's got tiny, tiny, weeny, weeny little legs. Um, yeah, he was very, very uh, close to the ground. Anyway, cute, cute dog. And so um, I have been asked to engrave this. So I've printed out a slightly smaller picture which will go basically there ish roughly I can't see yeah something like that this glass has no stress lines at all so I can come up comfortably I don't like going right to the top unless it's part of a, a scene or something like that like at trees and that sort of thing but this one I can come comfortably up to say about a centimeter quite happily um, near the rim of the glass. I don't like the idea of someone sipping wine with lipstick on and if you've got engraving right on the edge of the glass that lipstick is going to go into that engraving and I'm not really sure how easy that will come out. I've never experimented but I just don't like the idea at all. So as I say if I was engraving engraving a scene on a glass and it's going out the top that will probably be more uh, of something that you're going to put on display and not necessarily drink out of okay right so that is the plan and hopefully this time I can just go ahead and engrave no problem let's get on with it Okay, so the little image is stuck inside the glass with some white tack. I have a Dura White in the drill and I'm starting with the eyes. Small round movements. You don't want to have your eyes popping right out, but you want that little bit of a dent so that when you polish it out, it looks like a little shiny eyeball. Now you can see I am moving around the area because I'm going to make the rest of the area quite dark and still concentrating on um, a smaller circle in the middle as well. Much later on uh, I will add the eyelids on either side which will take away that sort of poppiness because you don't want every, everything else um, level uh, and then the eyeballs popping out so of course the camera angle shows it a little bit offset unfortunately but that's always the case but you get the general idea 
I do keep checking that I am not moving my head directly over one area and then directly over the other area on the other side of the image and then you can end up with a very wide picture. So I sort of try and hang back a little and get an, a, a picture. Oh, how can I explain? Uh, something virtually as you see it through the glass without turning it, if you know what I mean. Anyhow, um, working on the nose with this Dura White, I am kind of texturing it. This is a great little stone because it does cut well into the glass. And so because their little noses have that funny little textured bumpiness, um, this is a great tool for that because of course at the end they're going to be um, darkened with a rubber anyway but to have that that little bit of a texture is very very cute in the drill now is a uh, it's one of those carving burrs where you're going to carve into the top of the glass and so it's got diamond all the way around the edges all the way down um, in fact but because you hardly ever use it on the actual tip that is still quite sharp and in fact very very sharp very fresh diamonds and I'm using this to gouge in um, some lovely hairy bits um it is, it's really tricky to decide what you actually start with, but it, it doesn't really matter in the end. I like to build up and then go backwards a little bit and then build up again. But this is where I am picking up from the actual photograph positioning of the lightest bits of hair. And that really, really helps when I take the photograph away, um, then I can... It's easier to, cof to copy it if you've got all the main features in. So, um, of course, I will bring this all to the surface eventually, whereas at the moment it's, it's looking pretty tatty. Here's a scruffy little pooch, and you may have noticed my, my hair was pretty scruffy at the beginning, and I did laugh because <laughs> my hair was matching the doggy's hair. Um, anyway, so there is, as I say, it's a, it's a very dark dog and I wouldn't normally take on a, jo a job with such a dark animal uh, because, of course, our medium is white on black with black being the clear glass. But because these are dear friends of ours, this is my interpretation of the animal and and so once it is finished um, as long as he is fairly recognizable then it means the world to them I apologize for where the the light sort of blasts out on the side a little bit. It's, it's, it's very, very bright. I did try and turn down the exposure a little um, in the video program, but it is completely blown out, so I'm not really able to make much of a difference there, I'm afraid. Note the direction of the hair. It's always important to get the direction absolutely as it is for real. I've got quite a large diamond in the drill now. Um, on the top of his snout is a sort of very short hair with an interesting parting down the middle. Um, obviously it ends up 
um, much darker, but initially I was just going to use a diamond. Here I'm polishing out the eyeballs with a little brown rubber. You can't really see it that clearly. Nope, I've gone back to a different rubber. This is um, my soft grey rubber. So dripping some water so that I can try and see through the engraving a little bit better just to pick up the finer details around the eye and getting my head in the way again I see. I do apologize. This is a tiny little diamond. Picking up the edge of the iris. And now removing the image. You can see already there's a fair amount of likeness. That everything is in the right position and ready to get going. I have a blue stone and I'm running this blue stone over everything. It's slightly rougher than something like a Dura White. Um, it's a great great stone to pull everything together but I've said before you can use whatever stone you've got if it's a pink stone or a brown stone sometimes you have to run it oh here we go run it against one of these uh, whoops one of these sharpening stones oh, I've got the pink stone in the drill now it just takes away any little sharp bits that might be lurking in it because it, it's quite um, rough um, and irregularly rough as well. So you can see already that is a slight half tone in between the hairs. That's just what we want. Keeping of course the same movement. Movement of the hair that is. see how the light is catching the white diamond work right at the top. There are very deep gouges into that glass. You can see the ridges quite clearly.
And here I am using this same stone to create some little extra tufts of a paler shade. As you can, you can see when I show you the image that there's a lot of very dark hair going on. Of course we can't have dark, dark hair because otherwise it will be invisible on the glass. He has the most incredibly short legs, or had. Bless his little heart, he, he did die. Um, but very, very short legs, probably not as short as they looked, uh, just because he had so much hair on him, and his head was quite large and with quite a long snout. When you get to the edge of uh, something like this, a portrait where you're sort of cutting it off, obviously this is the body going back into the, the background, a very, very long body. Um, of course, I'm, I'm cutting it off there roughly along the shape of the glass edge. You can use a much smaller stone for this. I'm not pressing very hard. I'm going very fast, very lightly, and it is just enough to leave these these little wifty wafts of, of hair that are a lovely half tone. So I have a soft grey rubber. Now you can see it's quite a new one, so it's quite long, so I'm not running it very fast. If I did, it would actually spin off. It it will bend and flick off. Oh, there's someone at the door. Right, I'm back. And so with the little Jura White back in the drill, I am kind of blending it, the nose into the hair with the little textures and little bits of hair. Grey rubber again. It's a very uh, random, um, very quick bit of polishing. Um, there is so much darkness in the picture, but I am whipping around and, and probably touching up where the darkest areas are. And then I will sort of be blending it towards the lighter areas. There's no way this dog is going to end up as dark as the picture, of course. Um, but you, you can see how quickly the rubber is sharpening because the um, diamond work is quite um, coarse. Here I have a very coarse rubber, which is also a great rubber to use. It not only shades in between, but it also uh, works quite aggressively into the diamond work, so it tones down the diamond quite a lot as well. little hesitations of course are me glancing at the picture and trying to be as accurate as I can. Right, I have the hard rubber disc now. I'm running it over the very, very darkest areas. I 
I do not run these rubbers very fast. They're probably, hmm, not sure, I'd say probably about 15, 10 to 15,000 RPM, roughly. I mean, you, with the, the, these things, you can go a little bit faster, but I, I, I have to say that um, I mentioned in my previous vid video, uh, one of my mandrels holding a rubber disc actually broke and went flying um, recently. I know that the mandrel was quite old. I had used it through several of these rubber discs. So always be aware um, and be a little bit careful and always cover your eyes, um, which you should anyway. Glasses, headband magnifier, um, that sort of thing. Anyway, so there's our little doggy so far. Thank you for watching guys and I will be up with part two shortly.